important game there from Sword. That was the closest thing to a shutout that we've seen against a team like Gammon. And uh, the one thing I want to really highlight about this game is how individually every single member of Sword stepped up their game from the previous matchup. We've seen Watch on Elise, he was absolutely everywhere. Nagne's Ari, he landed charms crucially earlier than in the previous game. And yeah. Praying Kane, what on earth is Gamma going to do about that duo? Yeah, that duo lane is incredibly powerful. And at the very beginning, I thought... That's too long. Oh, sorry. I didn't even know Monty wanted to talk first. I just got really excited. No, no, go for, it, go for it. Go for it. I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't even look at like the organization. <laughs> I just got excited. All right, but yeah, Prey and Kane played absolutely amazingly, as as your face beautifully said a second ago. Um, and coming into it, I thought it, that Gambit should have two v one it because Malphite would do better than Renekton at no farm and just dodging Thresh, Twitch because they're just so scary and have so much kill pressure. And you saw how scary and kill pressure those guys got. Yeah, and the the. Prey and Kane lane are known for their all-in kill potential. I mean, they pick up a staggering amount of first bloods, and they play those trades so well, and that came in really important here. And yeah, going back to Watch, too. Watch is known. He's the quintessential carnivore jungler in Korea. He's known for his extreme early aggression. And that Nuna pick was so weird last game, and I'm glad we got to see him on Elise. And I also want to point out the difference in styles between the Korean teams. I mean, we've all been criticizing SK Telecom's vulnerability in the early game to these 3v1 dive situations. But Najin Sword is the diving team of Korea. Their motto is do dive. You see the fans have the do dive signs whenever they play. And this is a team that has always had these tactics. And you can see the big difference. They know how to defend against it better. We saw that in the first game. And they also know how to execute it better and take those dives to create massive snowball leads. Even with Mark Noon coming off the team, they're still playing the do dive style. Yep. Uh, I Good really think that the quintessential point of this game, the difference between first and second game, was not only nerves, but uh, I feel like, because I feel like Nagne played a much much more solid game than the first one. But 2v1 seems to really throw Korean teams off. This game, they had standard lane setups. You saw Expression beat um, Darien by almost 30 CS at 10 minutes. You saw Nagne do a lot better. He was actually able to use his jungler instead of the jungler being used to hold the 2v1 lane. And you saw Prey and Kane really just crush De uh, Genja and Voidal. It was, it was not even close. He had a Blade of the Ruin King against a Phage. That was mostly due to matchups, though. I think Renekton does have a favorable matchup against Malphite. In the mm -hmm. middle, Ari and Elise have a really good synergy, which they actually killed Alex with. He, he had, was hoping for a counter gank from Aatrox, got caught by the cocoon. And then on bottom lane, it was a straight up 2v2, and then generally indicates whoever pushes first wins, especially with Fresh and Twitch. Uh, they got the free push off from Gamut. I think that Gamut really dropped the ball there on bottom lane. Corky and, and Sona had vision on them all times. They should have won that push war for sure. I think there was also an issue with uh, coordination towards the mid game for Gambit as well. There was one team fight uh, where Twitch basically stealth engages like 400 units away from Malphite, and Darian jumps him immediately and lands the unstoppable force. Diamond goes the other way with Dark Flight, and it's just like, all right, well, Twitch is going to go escape with a lantern now. And it was like, like this is a team who you have, you have, you know, do die for the Koreans, but you have sea hero, kill hero from Gambit. <laughs> and Darian saw, or not Darian, but Diamond saw here and was like, late. <laughs> By that time, though, it didn't even matter what they well, did. Sure. Twitch, Twitch could have gotten killed immediately there, and Nagging Black Shield uh, would have just sword rather and would have cleaned up. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about the comps here, because, you know, uh, Cleanly and, and plainly simply, uh, Sword outplayed Gambit, right? I think mm -hmm. individually in every single lane, they got so far ahead that by the time the team fight phase came about and Gambit's, I don't really want to call it a, call it a wombo combo comp, but that Malphite, Aatrox, Orianna, it never got into a position to really make an impact in the game. And I felt like it was too risky to play against an incredibly mobile team with Renekton, Elise, and Ari. So, you know, what's your take on the picks and bans that Gambit had coming into this match? I really like that they took out uh, Shen away from Gambit and the Fizz from Alex E. Uh, at the same time, Gambit's comp is really a do or die. If they get behind, it's not going to work. You could see that Alex at the end of the game ran the five man Oriana ulti and it just didn't do enough. But if you get ro snowballing with Malphite and with uh, Aatrox, he's just going to annihilate Twitch wherever he shows up. Yeah, I thought it was a really cool idea to save the pocket Malphite at the very, very end there, knowing they were likely to pick Twitch once more. Uh, but the issue is that Prey is just so good. He uh, got a stopple for sometimes, he would flash out of the way other times, and just generally speaking, his synergy with Kane in team fights to spread out to lantern away from the melee champions is very successful, and you don't get to play divers against Twitch. We saw it in the first game, we saw it here as well. 
this they really picked the wrong game to pick Malphite. Um, this is this was not an AD centric team comp. They just had Twitch as an alternative source of DPS because Renekton, Elise, and Ari are really good sources of damage. The first game was the best game to play Malphite because they had a new new Twitch combo. Um, so I don't really think Malphite was the best pick here. And really, there's just nobody to deal with the Renekton Elise combo that's going to shred your backline. So talk to me a little bit now about the thought process going into game three, right? Seeing that. Gambit really had to scrap into fight for their victory in game one. It was a lot closer with Sword. Game two, Sword come out and completely take control of this matchup. Now we're going into picks and bans for game three, where I feel in game two, a lot of the game was decided by this composition. Like you said, it, it's do or die. Mm -hmm. What do both of these teams have to do? Because we've seen a lot of emphasis on that Cassidy and the Evelyn, the Zed, you know, those types of bands. Are we going to stick to the same and, and you know, how are we going to go forward? Gavin's going to be blue side now. I think the last game they actually ban Shen themselves. Yeah. This yeah, game it won't it. happen, so it's another ban forced upon Sword. At the same time, they, I don't think they want to go up against Fizz again. They seem to struggle against that as well. Uh, if I was Gambit, I would target the Comfort picks, maybe hit the Ari, get him off that, hit the Fresh as well. Make them at least change their routine so they can't draw on, on the confidence from the last few games and they have to come in completely fresh. Aside from that, I would really hope for Gambit to go into 2v1 lanes because yes. I think they'll probably be better off than a straight lane matchup. Yeah, and going off that, I fully expect Sword to do everything in their power to go into standard 2v2, 1v1 lanes because that's I th where I think they excel. Prey and Kane should be able to consistently beat Genja and Voidal if they're on their A game, especially if they have such a dangerous lane like Thresh Twitch. So yeah. what, what do the teams do then coming into this one? Are we going to be seeing those Ozone Wards that we keep talking about? You know, very deep invade. And also, you know, thinking about the 2v1s, We've seen Genshin playing the likes of Kogmo over the course of the weekend, and uh, you know, is that a, a champion that he could fall to to try and force a two v one, get the range? Is he going to play maybe someone safer, stick with a Corky if it's possible? I, I don't know if there's anything that Gambit could pick straight up that would like survive the two v two unless they like refocused all their bands and removed all the aggressive supports, removed Twitch, and said, all right, we're going to like first pick Zyra and try to get lane pressure. But I think that sacrifice is too much strategically. Um, as far as champion pick specifically, it really depends on what kind of comp they want to run, but it's really up to their level one to get some ward coverage and pick good lanes. If they manage to put a diamond at the solo lane, start starting his jungle pretty safely, that would free up Genja and Voidal to allow, to allow them to uh, fast push early. And I think that's what really what they need to do. They need to get XP advantage, put the pressure on the enemy bot lane, make sure they're ahead of inexperience, because else they will lose the 2v2 trade that they will be forced upon. I think that uh, the key to Gambit's victory is Alex Jits getting ahead like he did the first game, but it's going to be really hard if standard lane setups are how they are, because Watch is such an aggressive ganking jungler, he's going to be keeping Alex Jits down, making sure that Nogne doesn't fall behind. Now talk to me a little bit about you know, Sword and, and how you've seen them playing Monty, because you know, you've, you've had a little bit more first-hand uh, knowledge with him. We've seen two games. Game one, a little bit questionable, maybe more picks and bans. In game two, they definitely bounce back. Uh, I mean, Sword is a very inconsistent team. And yes, they, they lost out in the group stages, but did they ever, and we have two games, just like we had in the round robin here in, the, in OGN, and they never actually lost both games. They split every one of their games in groups. They just didn't get enough points to get out of those groups. So, you know, it's, it's all big ups and downs, and I didn't know what to think about think about them coming in here. Game one, I thought they put, they were very disappointing. They made incredible errors in team fighting positioning. Game two, they looked nearly perfect, yeah. right? So you never know what game, what Same sword you're going to get from yeah. game to game. Very similar with Gambit. We'll have to see. We'll find out which one of these teams is going to secure that third victory. We do have to take a very quick break and mentally prepare ourselves for that game three between Gambit and Najin Black Sword. The winner moves on to the semi-finals. The loser packs their bags and goes home. But first, let's turn up the sound of the game and listen in on Najin Black Sword as they call their punches and win one of those epic fights. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Let's do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh my god. I'm going to die. 나쁘지 않아, 나쁘지 않아, 나쁘지 않아, 다 죽여, 다 죽여! 아, 오케이, 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 